In Dungeon Encounters, your objective is to descend 99 floors of dungeons with your chosen party of up to 4 characters, fighting enemies in either turn-based or real-time battles along the way. Now that the premise of the game is out of the way, let me tell you why it fucking sucks. Let's start with the dungeons themselves. Visually, this is what you're going to be looking at all game. A bunch of blank, tiled paths with a flat, pretty much monocolored background. Every 10 floors, you're blessed with looking at a different background color. You got dark brown for the first 10 levels, green for the next 10, and a light brown for the 10 after that. Maybe they would have switched it up and thrown in like a polka dot floor or some shit for the next 10, but I can't tell you because I gave up playing at floor 27. But more on that later. Oh, and uh, here's the music too you'll be enjoying while you explore these floors. Just kidding. There is no exploration music. Just the wind. There's no pretty landmarks to gaze at either, but you know, that's okay. The game has numbers for you as placeholders instead. White numbers can mean a shop, treasure, enemy intel, or a staircase connecting floors, while black numbers are enemy encounters. Dungeon layouts are fixed for every floor, but enemy placements are random each run. Getting deeper into the dungeons mechanics-wise, every tile you run over gets highlighted. For every 1,000 tiles covered, you get an ability point, and if you explore every tile on the floor, you get three. These ability points are very important because they let you not only use crucial battle skills like resurrection, restoration, and passives like immunity to petrification, but also dungeon navigation skills that let you like instantly jump up and down between floors or teleport across tiles. The problem though is walking around dungeons, highlighting every square to get these points is tedious as all hell. First off, Unless you equip the eagle eye ability, this is how zoomed in the camera is on your avatar character. Can barely see shit, so if you miss a single tile, have fun walking around like a jackass looking for it, because there's no map button either. The early floor layouts are tolerable. They range from 200 to 600-ish tiles, and their paths are long straight lines, and there aren't that many dead ends. But later floors, at least up to floor 27 anyway, you start getting up to a thousand tiles a floor, and look how messy and jagged the floor layouts become. Abrupt turns and dead ends up the ass, following these paths to nothing, mindlessly highlighting tiles for those ability points. I would have stopped painting the map if I could, but I felt that the abilities you need the points for were too important, and that if I ignored them for too long, I would be putting myself at a huge disadvantage. Even moving around the dungeons is a pain. I had to stop playing with my analog stick and use the d-pad instead because I would keep overshooting my turns like this. Even with the d-pad though, it still happens more often than it should. Like the dungeons, the characters in the game you can have in your party have no personality either. First off, there are no classes in the game. The only thing that differentiates your party members are their stat increases when they level up. And they only get defensive stat increases too, mind you. No new abilities, and no offensive stat increases. All that has to come from items. And guess what else? You can only equip two offensive items, be it either weapons or magic. So each party member will only have two offensive abilities to use in battle, based on whatever you put into their two weapon slots. Instead of having actual characters in your party, you feel like you have a party of weapons holding meat bags. Because again, there are no classes in this game. You want to know the only time I was happy playing this shit? Is when I equipped this guy with a counter belt. Because I thought, oh finally, something to add some character to this fuck. You are henceforth my counter-attack dude. And equipping this guy with these boots, I donned him the speed attack guy. But it wasn't enough. Let's talk about the battles. When yours and the enemy's active gauge fills, they can use an attack. You can either have it where it pauses when one of your characters is up to bat, or just have it in real time. 
but unless you just want to spam A and quickly auto attack through fights, I don't recommend that because the enemies will never waste time thinking how they are going to attack you and you'll just be giving them free charges on their action bar while you decide which of your two abilities you want to use. You'll be safer having everything pause while you decide your action because you do not want to get wiped in this game, let me tell you. But I'll get more into that later. Every character has physical and magic defense values. And once those are bypassed, then a character can start to take health damage. Since your characters don't gain any attack stat increases when they level up, your entire offensive output is purely gear based. So if you get unlucky and have to go through a few floors without any weapon or magic drops, or you don't run into any pre-placed shops, you're going to start to notice your attack damage falling off fast. In my case, I had to end up avoiding fights later on in my playthrough because I started to run into enemies with very high magic defense, while my magic items at the time were long outscaled already. Now I had strong physical attack items at the time, but these motherfuckers had the flying trait too, so I couldn't hit them with my physical attacks anyway. While we're on magic, look at the names of the spells in this game. Like what the fuck is a Malio or a Maliflux? You know why they had stupid ass names for their spells like that? So they can get away with these shitty spell animations. It's much easier and cheaper to change the flashing color of an enemy portrait for your spell than it is to animate like a fireball or a thunderbolt hitting them instead. There are a decent number of different enemy types, but not as much as you'd think. When I first saw this long list of enemy indexes you can unlock, I got excited until I realized a lot of them were just clones of a higher level. And what's even worse, there are no bosses, I believe. Granted, I only pushed myself to floor 27. Maybe there's a boss further on, but as of 27 floors, there were no bosses in sight. Sometimes though, they'll stick a group of enemies 30 or 40 levels higher than your party out of nowhere for a fight, leaving you with no choice but to run from combat because getting wiped in this game is as bad as getting waterboarded. You lose the game if all available characters are disposed of whether they got KO'd or petrified or some shit. When that happens, you can restart and keep all of your character's levels intact, but you lose all of your items, you lose all your gold, and you lose all of your abilities and ability points. So if you get wiped, you're gonna have to paint the shitty maps again for ability points and find them again. You might not need to grind the same boring enemies for XP if your guys are leveled enough, but you will need to grind them for gold and item drops because you'll need those weapons to do any damage. You can't speed run to the floor you lost on with a shitty 30 damage sword and zero gain gold to buy a better one when enemies start having thousands of hit points. So if you get wiped, God help you with the further tedium you will have to face to get back to where you were. So when I hit floor 27, my gear was getting outscaled quickly by that time. I was running away from a lot of fights because I was doing no damage, but floor 27 contained a quote unquote town with properly leveled gear for that point. I bet you I could have pushed through 5 or 10 more floors comfortably with the new gear, but my opinion of the game wasn't going to change. I already knew the ongoing blandness I was in for by then. All this tedium, the boring, repetitive, bathroom tiled dungeons, the lack of spectacle in battles, the lack of player freedom and class diversity in combat, which has the worst battle music old Nobu has ever made too in my opinion, which is fitting for this game, and the horrible fear of more brain dead grinding if I got wiped, sucked all my will to continue onward, so I called it a day and uninstalled this shit. Do not waste your time with this game guys, leave it in the hole. Thank you.